Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to this video. Quick update. In the last video, you saw me have a two day refeed and my weight jumped up to 156 pounds after 850 grams of carbs. As of today, Thursday the 22nd of April, my weight is back down and actually lower than my last check-in. I'm now 151 pounds this morning and what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm going to take you through two day vlog and I'm gonna share with you my top tips for having a successful prep. I'm outside the gym right now I'm just about to go and train pull, one of my toughest sessions, and I will pick you guys back up in a bit. session done and I'm just sitting on the floor upstairs getting ready to pose I've done my cardio that was a brutal session and that would probably be my top tip when prepping is train smart like I've been through a lot of preps and I've been competing for over five years now and the more I prep the more I learn about my body and what it can cope with in terms of training and how it betters my physique for stage. This last year I've really focused on training really smart and cutting back on the volume, working on staying strong in the gym, you know, really tracking my lifts, looking at my top sets, back off sets, and that's been monitored for, I would say, the best part of about a year. And that session that I've just completed is really tough. It's got some big compound movements in there, but I'm really happy with the way in which I'm controlling the movements, the way in which I'm increasing the reps and the weights very gradually, and I'm at my strongest and my leanest. And I think that that is absolutely crucial when embarking on a prep, because as I've mentioned before, you wanna hold on to as much muscle as possible to showcase your best physique whilst dropping body fat. So being smart about how you train and not just going in and killing yourself and getting a calorie burn, I think is really, really important. In addition to that, being smart with your cardio too. Like starting a prep at like two hours of cardio is just crazy in my opinion. And I think that's where getting a good coach that knows what they're doing is really important because my prep started with 20 minutes of cardio in the morning and it's gradually increased to the point now where I've got 45 minutes of cardio in the morning and only 20 minutes of post-workout cardio. And even this week I said to Darren, I was like, do we need to increase that? Like, do we change it? And he's like, no. He's like, you had a big drop in weight, we had a two day refeed, um, there's no need to change anything, so your food's staying exactly the same, cardio's staying exactly the same, and we'll see how the week progresses. And it just goes to show that my body's responding really well, and it was a really smart choice because I've already dropped weight, and I'll probably get a low weigh in again on Saturday. But that's enough talking, I need to now pose, which is my second tip. If you are planning on getting on stage and prepping for a competition, you need to start posing from the moment you set your heart on that. And I think it's really important to get yourself a posing coach if you don't know how to pose and to practice every single day. So, let's get this posing show on the road. They said, don't fall. Don't forget all the things you've been taught, you've been told. Don't blink, don't run. Don't turn left or turn right or look straight at the sun My mind's gone in circles, I'm trying to fight it Get in these voices inside to stay quiet Gone to the place where all this began Just start again Oh, you won't see the light until the dawn breaks No, till it's all said Boy, am I excited to eat this. My post-workout meal. Cream of rice, the strawberry and banana flavor from CSN with 100 grams of pineapple. 
and then at 20 grams of whey, just blend it with water. I think that's most definitely got to be my next tip when surviving a prep is to have food on your diet that you enjoy eating. Gone are the days where you have to follow a bro diet and eat just white fish and asparagus and rice. You know, you can enjoy the foods you like and still get lean and get stage ready. Obviously you can't have pizza and burgers every day, but you can have variety and you should look forward to each and every meal. I have cream of rice three times a day on my diet, but I love cream of rice and it's a great source of carbohydrates and digests really easily um, and I just really enjoy it. I also have chicken and I also have steak on my rest day and I have salmon and I have rice and I've had potato on my diet that's gone now but I've also had nut butter rice cakes I have fruit on my diet I have Greek yogurt I have chocolate there's a lot of ways in which you can make progress on a prep and your diet should be something that you enjoy eating you should look forward to each of your meals and still know that you can make progress and get stage lean I've done it year after year and it's something that I advocate for all of my clients, especially my prep girls as well. So I'm going to eat up this meal and then I'm going to go and shower and show you what Thursday afternoon really looks like because it's probably one of the two days where I don't have any coaching calls, don't have clients that are checking in and it means I can sit on the sofa and just mong out and work on my laptop, which is definitely needed when I've just had a hefty session like I've just had now. Time to go and shower. I'll see you guys in a bit. All showered, hair clean, tied up in a bun, fresh face. I've scrubbed my face, I've put my deep conditioning moisturizer on, and I'm in a t-shirt and some joggers. <laughs> I'm gonna go and sit on the sofa, I'm gonna go and work, and that would be one of my other tips, is managing your recovery and your rest. It's so, so important to train effectively, learn when to rest, embrace the rest days, because you will need them if you're training hard enough, but also manage your sleep and your routine in terms of getting enough hours sleep, making sure that your body is well rested, that your mind is rested. I'm only currently training five days a week and I have two full rest days, but I am absolutely on it when it comes to my nighttime routine, which I will show you a little bit later on. Many hours later, and I am just preparing my last meal before I go to bed, my normal junk bowl, my cup of tea, and people always ask me what tea I drink. I actually drink Assam tea, it's my favourite, um, but it's quite hard to get here in Dubai. So I'm going to eat this up, take my supplements, have a cup of tea, maybe try and watch something on the TV. I'm currently watching Blacklist. I did start that many years ago with Darren, but since I've been on prep, I've been looking for things to watch when I'm doing cardio and things like that. So I've been catching up and I'm now up to season five of Blacklist. So if you guys have been watching Blacklist, you like watching it too, drop a comment down below, let me know what you're up to, but I'm gonna see if I can get an episode in. I'll be honest with you guys, once I've had my cup of tea and I'm feeling full from my last meal, I'm feeling warm and relaxed, I normally fall asleep halfway through an episode. Does anybody else feel like that? So I will catch you guys tomorrow morning when I wake up and I'll give you another tip with regards to structuring your day, getting your schedule in and enjoying your cardio session. Good morning, guys. Good morning, Stitchy. Hi. So it's just coming up to 10 to six. My alarm goes at half past five. I come down and take my greens drink before cardio, and then I prepare my breakfast, and I prepare two other bowls of cream of rice, one for pre, one for post. I'm gonna pop those in the fridge, and I'm gonna go and do my cardio. Now, I know that not everybody loves cardio and doing it at 5.30 or 6 a.m. or sometimes even earlier can be really painful <laughs> and motivation most definitely is going to be low for this. However, my big tip for this is to focus on how much cardio you've got to do, the heart rate you want to achieve, 
how many calories you want to try and burn and do something during your cardio session that you enjoy. I've got 20 minutes of HIIT and then I've got a further 25 minutes of LIS plus my stretching. So I actually wake up in the morning and I get excited for my cardio because those 20 minutes of HIIT I'm going to absolutely blast one minute on, one minute off on the bike listening to some of my favourite dance anthems and then for the further 25 minutes of LIS and 20 minutes stretching I watch an episode of The Blacklist on my phone on Netflix. It feels like the cardio session just goes really, really fast. I get a good sweat on and I will pick you guys back up afterwards. Cardio absolutely smashed and I'm always dripping after that session, but it feels so, so good. The other thing I do during the first 20 minutes of HIIT is I like visualize my day. I plan out what I'm gonna do in the morning, what session I've got to attack in the gym, what I'm doing in the afternoon for work. And I just find that when I'm sprinting and I'm moving really fast and I'm sweating, my heart rate's high, I feel like my brain goes really fast and I think about all the things that I wanna achieve in the day. And then, as you saw, I watch Blacklist and I'm now on the mat ready to stretch and then I'm done. But there's one last thing I wanna show you. With regards to managing your rest and recovery, something that I do, which I would highly recommend, is putting a block on your screen time. So as you can see there, nothing is going to open in terms of social media apps and things until 7 a.m. I actually close off all my apps from 10 p.m. till 7 a.m and I don't look at my phone during that time, which really helps me get off to sleep. It means my phone is not the first thing that I'm looking at in the morning. I get my cardio done, I prepare my breakfast, and then from 7 a.m. onwards, I can then start work. And just like that, it is now 7.30 a.m. I showered, I weighed myself, my weight is down again, check-in day is tomorrow, and I've just had my breakfast, and I'm now gonna start work. My final tip for prep has got to be supplementation. Really looking after your supplements in order to aid your nutrition and your recovery on prep. Here are what I would say are your daily essentials. Whether you are prepping or not, it's so important to have a good multivitamin, a good omega complex, some daily greens to supplement your micronutrients and a digest aid in order to make sure that you are absorbing all of your food. So I take these all year round, regardless. The other things that I take because of how I train, my recovery, kind of to stop any inflammation, are things like Turmeric Plus, Calm, and then K2 and D3. I would highly recommend if you are considering additional supplementation to get your blood work done because this is the easiest way to kind of monitor what you might be deficient in, maybe look at any underlying um, issues that are causing you to not recover as well, to fatigue quickly, or if you are having trouble sleeping. I already shared with you in a previous vlog the other things that I've implemented since starting prep. These three here are my go-to at kind of like six weeks, seven Seven weeks out and then because I'm on a very high protein diet I do supplement with kidney and tudka and then obviously you saw this in my refeed day glucose it's a disposal agent that helps um, me utilize carbohydrates and the uptake of them when I'm absorbing a huge amount of carbohydrates in a single meal so if you are on prep and you are not looking after your supplements I would highly highly recommend you do so and there you have it folks those are my tips for prepping smart and i really hope that you found those tips useful i hope that you're able to implement some of those and that you are able to embark on a prep in the most effective and sensible healthy way all of that being said the most important thing is that you hire a coach somebody that is extremely knowledgeable when it comes to bodybuilding and prepping clients and somebody that knows your category well and what you need to do in terms of prepping for a period of time your pre-season your off-season like all of those things need to be considered and it's something that i advocate for all of my clients and especially my prep girls that join my team but if somebody comes to me for prep coaching they sometimes 
on it for a whole year and we commit to the journey ongoing and I think it's so important that you invest in this sport wholeheartedly and that you don't see a prep as a means to dieting or just getting lean. Bodybuilding is a sport at the end of the day and you should be considering yourself an athlete and take all of those things into consideration. So I'm going to close off this video here. I'm going to carry on with the rest of my Friday and I will speak to you guys very, very soon. If you are not already following me on Instagram, go and head over there now. I will be posting my check-in and update tomorrow because it's Saturday, it's check-in day, but I'll catch you all in the next video. See you soon guys, bye for now.